And we're going to be talking about subsets of the domain. OK. Um, yes, the hard thing to do here is to think X axis. So you'll see what I mean, but I wanted to tell you that first. No matter what the graph is doing, think X axis. So what do functions do? Well, you can graph them. What do graphs do? Well, they often look like this. Let me make that bigger. They go up, they go down. Sometimes they get flat. Sometimes they have breaks in them. So we have, we have terminology to address this. And I have found that color coding can be a wonderful way to deal with this. So let me go to this color because it's closer to red and people who have trouble seeing red, there, purple. Purple is closer to blue. Okay, now, now I'm ready. Ooh, okay. Um, You see that getting into this topic is a little difficult. So first, let's talk about the arrows that we have on graphs. You already know what they mean. First, they're indicative of the graph goes on forever. And then the direction they go in shows that the graph goes forever in that direction and keeps going down and down and down here on the left. And over here, we know that that means that the graph is going to keep going to the right. And there's an implication there that the graph will, will maintain the same shape. So except for my bad drawing, um, this graph is going to keep tilting out to the left. All right, as it goes down, it's not going to go directly down. It's going to tilt out to the left. So eventually it will be all the way out at negative infinity. And this one is going to stay flat. It's going to maintain the same shape. Um, and it's going to go out to positive infinity this way. It's going to go out forever and ever and ever and ever. But when we talk about increasing decreasing and constant We only think about going left to right and describing the graphs in terms of a left to right movement. So I personally have found a very convenient way to think of this. I think of the graph as being the tracks to a roller coaster. The tracks that the cars ride on. And the actual increasing, decreasing and constant can be thought of like a roller coaster.
Is it spelled with two L's? I think it is, but I'm not sure. Anyway, a roller coaster. And what the roller coaster does is it only goes from left to right. That's very important because whatever goes from left to right can be described according to its location on the x-axis or its shadow on the x-axis. So to see what I actually mean, let's imagine a roller coaster car. You know, a bunch of roller coaster cars, I guess, with people having lots of fun. Ah! Right, you've got to put your hands up when you're going down, stuff like that. All right, this roller coaster is going to go up. Remember, this motion is from left to right. So right now, the, the roller coaster is going up, 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 up until it gets here. Right, and you know what that's like. It's like almost not moving when it's up there, but you know what's about to happen. It's about to start going down. Ah! That's happening next. going down. Then, whew, you're going to go constant for a while. That is flat. Up, and then you're going to start going up again. And then you're going to go flat. It's my kind of roller coaster. One eh, is enough for me. Now we have to be able to describe this motion. And so we have words. When the roller coaster is going up from left to right, we call that increasing. I'm going to say I in C. It's increasing here. In fact, a better way to write this would have been to write it in green, which is the same color as my increasing. I in C. So it's increasing. And then the motion downward is decreasing and the flat travel or the flat line is called constant. Let's just say con. So here's some more increasing And here's some more constant at the end. Got room. OK, and it's going to just keep going. This is the kind of thing any graph is going to do. Now, we have to be able, here's the hard part. We need to describe where, where the increasing, decreasing, and constant motion are happening. 
I mean, I can see it's going up. I can see the cars are going down or the graph is going down. I can see the the constant part of the graph and then the increasing and then the constant. I can see this with my own eyes. I can even see how high this is. But that's not where it's happening. Where it's happening are coordinates on the X axis. The increase the 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 intervals of increase, decrease, and constancy are subsets of the domain. That is, they're on the x-axis and they're actually parts of the domain. Because after all, the domain is on the x-axis. So, to say where the increase is happening, to say where the decrease is happening, to say where the constant level is happening, this is what I do. I look on the x-axis and I say to myself, self, we started all the way to the left. This was all the way down there out at the left. So we started at negative infinity way out there and then traveled on the X. Well, the X coordinate of the travel goes all the way to negative eight before the increase stops. And then if I want to log where the increase begins again, I would say, OK, well, the increase is going to begin at negative three on the X axis. And it goes as far as negative two on the X axis. So there are actually two areas of the graph, two areas of the track. That are increasing. And those are our intervals that are on the X axis. So let's write that down. In fact, I can write it over here. Because these are what you're being asked. List the intervals on which the function is increasing. And it says list, that's an important word that we need to now pay attention to. When you make a list, where's that word that says list, list. When you make a list, you say, well, you've got something, comma, something, comma, something. That's what we do with these intervals. So since there's more than one interval of increase, that is from negative infinity to negative eight, and from negative three to negative two, because that's where the increase is happening. I'm going to list them rather than put a U. I don't put a U, I list with a comma. Why? Because those are the rules. Negative infinity to negative eight. And then I put a comma. And then I put negative three to negative two. Notice I only use commas. That's important too. It's wrong if you put a bracket, even when you feel like you need a bracket, don't do it. 
Now for domain and range, when it's appropriate, you put a bracket, you put a union sign. But not when you're working with increasing, decreasing, and constant. And there's a reason, and maybe we'll talk about it later, but let's learn one fact at a time. Or two facts at a time. These are the intervals, or actually some books say the open intervals. Why open? Open means no brackets. Open means only parentheses. We're not talking about the end points, we're talking about what's in between. So the intervals on which the function is increasing are the interval negative infinity to negative eight, comma, the negative, uh, the, the interval negative three to negative two. Type your answer in interval notation. Use a comma to separate answers. OK, so this comma has got to be there. For you to make a list of intervals. This is an interval. You already know that, I know. This is an interval. You have listed the intervals. OK, let's look at list the intervals. Notice the S is in parentheses because you might have one interval. You might have two intervals. You might have no intervals. You might have a million intervals. Hopefully not. And there is indeed only one interval of decrease here. It goes from negative eight, and it ends at negative six. Notice we don't say where up and down, we say where left to right. So from negative eight to negative six, the, the, the tracks are going down. So they're, so the function is decreasing. So from, excuse me, negative eight to negative six. Let me double check that. Negative eight to negative six, that's great. Okay, now we have two intervals where the graph is constant. We have this and this. All right, now the, the coordinates on the x-axis where this is happening are negative six to negative three and negative two to forever, which is positive infinity. So negative six to negative three, constant there. And then a comma because we're just listing negative two to infinity. That's how you do it. And there's a whole picture of it.
Okay, now I'll tell you the reason that we only use parentheses. If I were to use a bracket at negative eight, then I would be saying that negative eight on the x-axis is part of the increase, but not part of the decrease, because it can't be two things at once. Therefore, it has to stay neutral. Not increase, not decrease, but that very temporary point in between. That's the reason. OK, let's do this again. It's the same thing. How did I get two? Hmm. Imagine that. All right, well, we'll skip it. We'll go here. That'll show them. All right, look at this. You already have your intervals over here. Isn't that nice of them? These indicate that the graph goes forever. So we can continue this forever. If you want. But that's all those arrows mean. But moving from left to right, our roller coaster car is. Gotta check my colors here. Okay. As you move from left to right, you can all but see these little cars. And people with their hands in the air. Yeah, as, as the train is going down. All right, so this is decreasing. Now it's flat for a while. That was blue. It's already blue. And then it starts going up, but it's going to go up forever. These people are going to run out of oxygen if they're not careful. Um, green. Green goes up. It's like spring. OK, so we've got decreasing. We've got constant. And we've got increasing. Spelled the whole thing. OK, well, where does this start? Out here, out here. At negative infinity and out here. At positive infinity is where it's going to end if you can end at infinities. Um, so from negative infinity into one, two, three, negative three. This part of the X axis. There, now it's straighter. This part of the X axis. Is where the decrease is happening. This part of the X axis is where the flat travel, the constant is happening. Oops, OK, all right. And this part of the X axis. Is where the increase is happening. Oh, but wait a minute. Um, one, two, 
3. All right, this is a very symmetrical graph, isn't it? Notice I have to ignore these sixes. They're designed to mess me up. Because the, these guys go from forever to forever. The left forever to the right forever. That is a long way to be traveling downhill. All right, so from negative infinity to negative three is where the decrease is happening. So come over here. Oh, oh, yeah, but constant is negative three to positive three, and the increasing is three to infinity. Again, we only give the X coordinates. We're just saying where it's happening. So, okay, they always ask increase first. I don't know why. Um, I guess it's good to always have it in the same order. Three to infinity with parentheses right here. That's the only answer you can give right there. You might want to give that. That would feel correct, but it's wrong. This is correct. Now it's constant from negative three to three. You probably want to say that, but don't do it. Fight that temptation. We have to say it this way. Negative three to three, only with parentheses. And finally, the function is decreasing on negative infinity to negative three, negative infinity out here to negative three, right here. Again, you're, you're gonna wanna put a bracket there, but don't do it. Do this. Okay. Okay, I love this stuff. You know, it's it's like a puzzle. Okay, now this is designed to confuse you. So you have to make sure you don't panic. First, let's color code this. <clears throat> Constant. <laughs> Maybe not. Constant. Increasing. Decreasing. increasing. And look at those nice solid dots. If we were doing domain, they're not asking for domain, but I'm going to show you how you would write the domain. This starts at negative nine with a bracket. Whoop, don't write it there. With a bracket. Because we're talking about domain. You can use brackets. Now, my sense would be to, with an open circle, at negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four, Put a paren like that. But then also at negative four, I have a filled in line, which means that X does equal negative four. So there go my plans right there. Since X equals negative four, 
and we're talking about domain, which is on the X axis. Even though there's a break in this line. The break is in the Y's and not in the X's. So. Um, yeah, our X's are going to be all filled in until we get to one, two, to two, right? <laughs> two right there. And then it stops and there's a gap, but there's a filled in circle there. So I put a bracket. And then the graph picks up here again at three. I put a union. And then the graph goes until positive nine, the X axis part of it. That would be the way I'd write domain. But that's not the way you're going to do this because we don't use brackets and we don't use use when we're writing increasing, decreasing, and constant. All right, now, on what intervals is the function increasing? Okay, from negative four to positive two, three, four, five, six, seven, and from seven to nine. Those are the coordinates of the x-axis, or the, co the x-coordinates of all the points, where the graph is increasing. So, I'm going to list this negative 4 to 2, and 7 to 9, And those parentheses are already there, so don't put another set. Am I on the right one? No, I'm not. There. Okay, we just answered this one. Negative 4 to 2, 7 to 9. There we are, A. Now, on what interval is the function decreasing? Cool. All right, from three to seven. So that's what this is. This is one interval with endpoints three and seven. And then where is the function constant? Starting at negative nine, and going almost all the way to negative four, where it would be normal to use a, a, a parenthesis, since that's an open circle, if that's all you were looking at. However, with constant and increasing and decreasing, we always use parentheses. So negative nine to negative that's hard. You have to look really closely. Which is why, even before now, that like if somebody said that was four, I'd let them have the point. Because it, it is sometimes hard to see. 
So don't get too paranoid about having to be totally, totally exact. Okay, this is the end of increasing, decreasing constant. Um, do you want to say anything? Okay. We now are going to linger for a few minutes at the top and at the bottom. And we're going to discuss relative maxima and relative minima. Okay, these are plurals. We have one relative maximum and one relative minimum. Let me write that. Relative, I'll tell you why it's called relative in a minute. Relative maximum If we had more than one, then we would be writing the relative maxima. But there's only one. So it's a relative maximum, and down here we have a relative minimum. All of that is from Latin. Okay. Why are they relative? Well, I'll tell you. This graph is going to continue going up and out. It's curving, but this is the best I can do forever. And this graph is going to continue going out and down forever. Yes, if we were thinking in terms of increasing, decreasing, and constant, we would say, well, it's going up from negative infinity, and that would not be wrong. Okay, so the reason I mention this is notice that here, here the y coordinate is negative 33, so this is negative 33. That is not the lowest y value here. These keep getting lower and lower and lower. And up here, it looks like this touches the x-axis, but it doesn't. It's just the black marker that touches the x-axis. The actual graph comes almost all the way up to the x-axis to negative one, y equals negative one. Okay, that's, not the highest point because the graph keeps going up, 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 up. But think about a neighborhood. This is like the top of a hill and this is like the bottom of a valley. And then maybe you've got the Alps going up, a, a tall mountain going up and a, a deep, deep ravine going down, but, but, you know, this is just, in this area, this is the highest point, and in this area, this is the lowest point, so this is the relative maximum, it's relatively the maximum point, and this is relatively the minimum point, so it's a relative minimum. Okay, they are also called relative maxima and relative minima. The plural, talking about all of them now. All of them ever, maxima and relative minima. Mm -hmm. 
Minima. <laughs> Sounds like enema. Ah. Okay. In all seriousness, I wonder if that comes from Latin. Enema. I don't know. Um, somebody should look it up. Maybe I will. Relative maxima and minima have other names. We're going to talk about two other names very briefly. These are called the extreme points on the graph. So the plural is extrema. Extrema. They're the extreme points. But more commonly, they are called turning points because that's where the um, roller coaster turns from going up to going down, from going down to going up. Turning points. You're going to see that in just a minute. But the relative maximum, all right, this is just like going back to quadratics. This would be a minimum point, and this would be a maximum point. But the y coordinate of the vertex of the vertices. Here, k is the minimum value. It's also just called the minimum. k is the minimum. Over here, K is called the minimum value, but it's also called just, I mean, the maximum value. It's also just called the maximum. K is the maximum. It's also K is the maximum. My cat sounds like she's getting in trouble. OK, so it's the same thing here. The relative maximum is the Y coordinate of the relative maximum point. That would be, let me make this bigger. And then go over there. The relative maximum is negative one. The relative minimum is negative 33. It's like the altitude of the relative maximum point and the altitude of the relative minimum point. So the relative maximum is negative one at x equals. You always say where something is on the x-axis. It's at negative three. So the relative maximum, the local high point, is negative one 
because it's higher than the other points around it. And it's located at X equals negative three. The relative minimum is negative 33. And it's located at X equals five. So the x-coordinate and the y-coordinate both have a special meaning. The x-coordinate says where the relative minimum is located, and the y-coordinate says what the relative maximum, what the relative minimum is. And now comes the question, because the relative maximum and at, well, yeah. The relative maximum point and the relative minimum point are what separate increasing from decreasing, which is why they're turning points. So from negative infinity, to negative three, you're going up, you're increasing right there. From negative three, oh, and also over here, from five, x equals five, right? From x equals five to positive infinity, the roller coaster is also going up. It's increasing. So, can't go around putting dots on things. So, A gives you your coordinates of the intervals of increase. On which intervals is the, incre is the function increasing? Well, from negative infinity to negative three, and from five to infinity. On which interval is the function decreasing? From X equals negative three to X equals five. Right here, but we don't put X equals. We just put negative three to five. That's where the decrease is happening. So now we have another problem just like this. Let's just do it. Here's your relative maximum point. Here's your relative minimum point. It looks like now that negative one, it says this is one, so it must just be really, really close. Yeah, if you look closely, I don't think you can see it here, but you'll see it on your own computer. Yeah, the actual blue line is above the x-axis, so they're saying the y-coordinate is positive one. OK, and here they're saying that the relative minimum point is 5, negative 17, and it is located at X equals 5. And this is the relative minimum. I'll never remember all that. Negative 1, 1, OK. The relative maximum is 
1, and it's located at x equals negative 1. This is y, this is x. Negative 17, okay. And the relative minimum is negative 17. And it's located at x equals 5. And on which interval is the function increasing? Increasing. From negative infinity to negative one and from five to positive infinity. Negative infinity to negative, on which interval is the function decreasing? No, no, increasing always comes first. So, we are increasing from negative infinity to negative one, and from five to infinity. Let me go back there and you can see. From negative infinity to negative one, and from five to infinity, the graph is going up. And that's going to be right here. C. On which interval is the function decreasing? Oh no. From. Yeah. From negative one. To five because here, this is going down. From x equals negative one to x equals five. Now decreasing. Okay, negative one to five, B. Let's pull out. So there we have that. Okay, now this is with a parabola, a cup down parabola. And I have every faith you can do this one yourself. So let's go on to something that's fun. For every polynomial in the universe, how does that sound? For every polynomial ever thought of, and there are more than an, well, you can't have more than an infinite number. Well, actually you can, but that's a real deep subject. Um, anyway, <laughs> for every possible polynomial, all you have to memorize is this, these four graphs, because now <coughs> we're gonna talk about what a graph looks like out at negative infinity and positive infinity. 
not in the middle. That's where all the interesting stuff is happening, but out at the ends. There are only four possibilities. And here they are. If the polynomial has an even degree and a positive leading coefficient, like none of those. It's going to look like this on the ends. Now, not in the middle. We don't care about the middle. We're talking about the ends, way out at the ends. Now, the degree is the highest power. Okay, so if the, co if the, um, if the polynomial has an even degree, but a negative leading coefficient, it's going to go down on both ends. It's going to look like this out at the ends, not in the middle, but at the ends, down, down. So this would be an example of that. The highest, uh, the highest, Ah, uh ah, -uh, no, it wouldn't. No, it would not. Because look at this. That's the highest power. This is a trick. Here. Six is the highest power down here. Okay, that's an even number. And the leading coefficient is the number in front of the highest power term. So that's negative. How are we gonna know which graph is which? Well, don't choose these, come down here. This has, to, regardless of what it looks like in the middle, it's gotta go down forever on the left and down forever on the right. And I know that because it's got an even degree and a negative leading coefficient. So this is the answer. Piece of cake. Now, if it's got an odd degree, an odd highest power like this, but a positive leading coefficient, which this is not, it's negative. Now I'm looking, aha, here, look at this. This is a trick problem. This should be written as 0 0.7 x to the seventh plus x to the sixth minus 4.4 x to the fourth. Highest power should always come first. This has an odd degree. This polynomial has an odd degree and a positive leading coefficient. It on the ends, not in the middle, on the ends, it's gonna go up forever on the right and down forever on the left. So let's see what this does. Up forever on the right and down forever on the left right there. Notice there's nothing in there. They're not, you don't have to know what it looks like in the middle. You don't have to know how many times it goes up and down. All you have to know here is what happens on the ends. And then here, if you've got a problem like this, it's got an odd degree and a negative leading coefficient, then it's going to go up forever on the left and down forever on the right. So up on the left, down on the right, 
That's our answer to this one. Again, you're not being asked what the whole thing looks like. Just what do the ends look like? Here you've got an even degree and a negative leading coefficient. Negative degree, oh, even degree, I'm sorry, even degree, negative leading coefficient. It's going to look like that. It's going to go down forever on the left and down forever on the right. Already did that. Let's do this. This is all jumbled up, isn't it? This is one tenth x to the fourth minus two thirds x to the third plus 10. All right, it's got an even degree and a positive leading coefficient. It's going to look just like that on the ends. So right here. And coming down here, we already did this one. Let's do this one. This is X to the fifth. All right, that's an odd degree and it's positive. It's got a positive invisible one in front of it. So it's going to go up forever on the right and down forever on the left. It's gonna look kind of sort of like that. Okay, so there is stuff to learn tonight. Make flashcards. I'm telling you, make flashcards. Tomorrow, we're going to learn more function behavior. And then Thursday, even more function behavior. And a new way to factor. 